Hello, chess fans. Welcome to another edition of Chess Chat, a program designed to give you, the viewer, a good understanding of the fascinating world of chess. I am George Marijanian, Program Director of the Wachusett Chess Club at Fitchburg State University. This club meets every Wednesday evening from 7 to 11 in room C159 in the McKay Complex at the University. And with me today at the Fitchburg Access Television Production Center is our award-winning director, Darren Dame of Fitchburg. He's assisted in the control room and on camera by fellow resident and longtime Watch You the Chess Club member, Brian Bigelow. And across from me is my colleague, trusty co-host, chess author, active chess player, certified tournament director, an all-around good guy, Dave Kucher of Westminster. Hello, Dave. Hi, George. Well, Dave, we have a very exciting chess chat program, I hope, for our viewers mm -hmm. today, because we are paying tribute, honor, to a grandmaster, an American grandmaster, who died six weeks ago, mm -hmm. August 26th, in Budapest, Hungary. He was Grandmaster Pal Benko, although yeah. in Hungarian it's pronounced Benke. Oh, yeah, the Hungarians would refer to him as Pal Benke, <laughs> but we knew him as Pal Benko. Mm -hmm. Now, what can, we, what can you tell our viewers about Pal Benko? Well, he was one of the top players in this country back, you know, in the 60s and the 70s, but right. how did he get to the, wait, a little about his, about his life. He, where was he born? Where was, he was Pal born, Benko? Well, we, we know he was born in France. Now, why was he born in he France if he had a Hungarian parents? Right, because they were on vacation. Okay, in, in France. France. Yeah. And Imagine this, that to be vacation. I know exactly when you're having a, a eight or nine woman months pre pregnant. His mother's yeah. pregnant and, and they're taking a vacation in France. Yeah. And and that turned out the fact that he was born in France turned out to be to his favor? critical. Yeah. Or, 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 in, in, in his future. Future. Okay. Um, but then he, yeah, he had a. It was a, a tough beginning, I guess. Yeah, very tough childhood. Because I mean, he was he was a teenager during World War II. Right. So he was, uh, what, I think, conscripted to... Uh, the Hungarian army. To, he, uh, was to, to, he was To dig ditches yeah. for the Hungarian yes, army. Yes, that's what he did. Yeah. He was captured, I think, by the Soviets. The Soviets, right, exactly. At yeah. one point, and uh, so No, he, he had a very tough, you know, childhood. World War II broke out when he was 11 years old. Yeah. Now, he had learned the game of chess from his father. It was either at the age of 9 or 10. He had just learned the game. Uh, but, again... He, the World War II came at a very bad time for, for him yeah. and, and, and millions of others millions in, of all the in the world. Yeah. Uh, so that he, you know, he was, again, he was, uh, he was captured. You know, I mean, eventually the, he was actually he was sent to a, he was, wasn't he sent to a camp, you know? I uh, think so, in the in, in yeah, Soviet Union. Soviet I, Union. And he wasn't released from that, that tr camp until after Joseph Stalin's Stalin death. Stalin died, right. Stalin died in March 1953. Benko was able to get a release after the death of Stalin. Yeah. Right. Okay. But he he had a very tough life as far as, you know, his mother died, you know, toward the end of the war. His mother did not survive, you know, the right. war. His father was able to actually make it to this country before, before him. Now, Pal, Pal Benko was playing actually in a student team championship, the World Student Team Championship in 1957. It was July 1957. It was in Reykjavik, Iceland, which, by the way, was the site where Bobby right. Fischer won his world championship in right. 1972. He was able to get to the American embassy, and he sought asylum. Right, and that was his second time. That, yes, he had done it before, yes. He had done it before and been in, caught. In, in 1952, he was playing uh, in an event. Uh, Just outside of Berlin, I Berlin, think. and he made his way. He was trying to make his way to, to the embassy in West Berlin. Right. But the East German police caught him. Right. And they arrested him. And, uh, and he, was he, in, he, was, he was in a concentration camp. He was in a concentration camp. Yeah, right. Exactly. So he, that was that very tough for yeah. Benko in those, year, in those war, war years. Yeah. Right. But he finally made it. He right. finally made it. You know, uh, yes, it was 1957, July. But you know how long it took before he was actually given a visa? The, the U.S. government actually granted a visa? No. October. It was actually on October 11th, 1957, is when he finally got a pre what they call a preferential visa. 
Okay. Yeah. And that's that's where this this quote comes in, right? Yeah. From, from Bill Wall's website. Yeah, let's, yeah you mentioned Bill Wall. Now, uh, 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 we're going to give a lot of information. A lot of this information is from Bill Wall, who is a noted chess uh, author, historian. chess historian. Yeah. Uh, 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 really, this if anybody were to Google Bill Wall, W A L L, and chess. It, it, it would, he, It'll lead you to his website, which is overwhelming. Which the is, amount yeah, of material, is the word, historical yeah. material that Bill Wall has compiled is yeah. amazing. I urge our viewers to, to consult or to check and visit yeah. Bill Wall's chess page. Yep. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. He's one of the most incredible guys. Yep. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know how you found time to do this. He retired from the Air Force after 25 years. I'm sure he's been building that up over oh, yeah, it's a decades. Massive, it's a massive yeah. wealth of information. He just continually Bill adds Wall to it. Bill yeah. has to be applauded for all that he's done yep. for chess. Yep. Anyways, so he got the, he, so he got the visa in October, October 11, 1957. Okay. And he landed in New York. Actually, he didn't arrive into this country until October 17th okay. at Idlewild Airport, New York, you know. Just now Kennedy, okay. I think. Yeah, right, that's, down from okay. Yeah, it's now called, that's the, that's, that's, that's Kennedy the now called Kennedy International, yeah, yeah. yes. So, and he was awarded the Grandmaster title by the World Chess Federation the following year, mm -hmm. in 1958. Okay, so. What else can we say? Well, the interesting thing about that, his coming to America, is, yes. which I saw on Bill Wall's website. Yeah, what did Bill Wall say? he mentions. Oh, as far as how he got the, yes. Yeah, it says. How in, did he get here? In 1957, Benko won 350 in prize money in Iceland, yes. which he used to fly to New York. Right. But at the time, Hungarian refugees were not allowed in the U.S. as the refugee limit had reached the limit of 30,000. Oh, really? It says, however, Benko yes. was able to come to America with his French passport. Aha, uh -huh. because he, had been he born was born in France. In France. Yeah. So. It was July 15, 1928 that he was born in yeah. Amiens, France, which is northern France. He was lucky that he yeah, was born that, there yeah. because he would probably would not have made it to this country right. as he did because of the quota being filled by Hungarians right. yeah. in that year. Okay. Yeah. So, it, so he, again, he, was, he got the title in 1958. He had already been given the title of International Master by the World Chess Federation mm -hmm. in 1950, which is the first year that the World Chess Federation was issuing oh, that title, titles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. But it, in 58, they awarded him the, yeah, the, inter, the Grand Master title. Yeah. Because actually in the following year, in 59, he was one of the ones who played in the, what they call the interzo interzonal, now, actually, has, uh, okay, we're showing now, uh, Darren's been showing some photos. Do we have a photo of, uh, of, 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 of probably Darren has already shown this because I haven't been paying yeah, attention. Yeah. But if we can find the, the photo of Bobby Fischer, let's find the picture where B Pal Benko has his arms folded. There we go. He's looking, here he's, and, and there is Bobby Fischer on the right playing Paul Carey's. On the left, by the way, we, we've done a, a, a chess chat program on Paul Carey's mm -hmm. back in February of 2016. We did a show on, okay. on the player on the left. By the way, that show received more than 10,000 hits on FATV's website. Wow. It's, it's, it's a record yeah. for the number of most hits, February 2016. But there is Pal Benko, his arms folded, and that's from the 1959 uh, uh, interzonal, I think it was played in Blood Yugoslavia. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. in Blood Yugoslavia. And Benko played. Uh, so that's a, that's a classic photo right mm -hmm. there of three of the top players of the world. So what else can we say about, uh, what else can we say? Actually, we should probably, uh, wait a minute, you know what? Did Benko ever meet Donald Trump or vice versa? Because, <laughs> you know, we, we asked this no, question. We're, we're jumping ahead. We're, we're jumping, jumping ahead, ahead. In, to the I, 90s. I'm only jumping ahead because we, we need time to present our, our, the game we're going to present to our yep. viewers. But do we have any? Oh, no. Before we present and talk about Donald Trump and Pal Benko, <laughs> yeah. we want to point out to our viewers that Pal Benko dominated the U.S. Opens in this country. Right. That was, it was in the title, right? It's in, the in our title. Our title of our show is Pal B Grandmaster, a tribute to uh, Grandmaster Pal Benko, eight time yeah. U.S. Open champion. Right. He has won more U.S. Opens than anybody in U.S. Yep. Hi US history. Yep. And he did it in 1961, 64. I met him for the first time in 64 in Boston. Mm -hmm. in the tournament. That's right, the US, had, Open. Uh, U.S. Open had 229 players. Benko played, won the tournament. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he played, uh, he won it in 65, 66, 67, 69. And then he won twice in the, in the mid-70s, 74. I was there. 
in New York City, 74. Mm -hmm. he, he, he shared it with uh, Czechoslovakian Grandmaster Vlastimil Hort. Mm -hmm. And then in 1975, he tied with Bill Lombardi. Okay. We've done a show on Bill yep. Lombardi yep. Uh, in 75. That was done in Lincoln, Nebraska, 1975. Mm -hmm. But again, Banco holds the record for the most number of U.S. Oval. It's phenomenal. Here he is now. Here's a photo of Pal Benko with Susan Polgar. One fellow of, Hungarian. A fellow Hungarian who actually now is now uh, has a chess program at Webster University in St. Louis. Yep. She was at Texas Tech in yep. Lubbock, Texas, yep. but now she's running a, a very successful chess program uh, in, in, in St. Louis at mm -hmm. Webster University. Yep. And of course, they were best of friends, you know, yep. and of course, a fellow Hungarian. Yep. Yeah. So, but I want to actually, because we have, I see we have not too much time left. We, uh, well, if we, there's so much, Bill Wall is the place to go. Right. But, but the other, the key thing to mention, his yep. place in history yes. is in 1970, was it? Yes. Actually, we, we should can't, not fail to mention that. Can't forget that. that. In 1970, Pal Benko qualified for the interzonal tournament. This is a tournament to determine who the candidates would be to be uh, the, challenge the, world the challenge for the world championship. Yep. It was going to be held in Palma de Mallorca, Spain. Benko came in third in the, that, in the 1969 U.S. Championship. Uh, who came in first? Sam Rashevsky right. and Bill Addison, who played here in Fitchburg with Lake. Mm -hmm. International master Bill Addison played here and won in 1964 at the fourth Central Union Open here in Fitchburg. Mm -hmm. He came in second. Fisher, Bobby Fisher did not play. Why did Bobby Fisher not play in the 1969 U.S. Uh, the some, U.S. Some, some problem with the number of players he, he, did not, he was not happy he with? He was not happy with the number of players. There were only 10 players in that 1969 U.S. Championship, and he disagreed with that, and he didn't play. Yeah. So what did Benko do, who qualified for the Interzonal the following year? He says, I'm going to yield my spot, and he said, I'm going to give up my spot, but it would require the, 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 the okay of all the other participants in the U.S. Championship, and all of them agreed that Fisher should play, could play in, in Benko's in in place. place. Right, right. Phil Benko's place. So Benko place. gave up his spot to Bobby Fisher. Bobby Fisher would never have become world champion right. in 1972 right. if it were not for Benko giving up his yes. seat into the, in the 1970 interzonal in Palma de Mallorca. Yep. That, that's a fantastic, yep. that's, that, that, is a, that changed history. Yes, yep, by, by absolutely. By Benko doing that. Yep. Now, before we get to the game, let's just quickly, if we oh. can, talk about Benko, uh, Benko meeting Donald Trump or vice versa. Right. In so 1994, the World Championship was in New York City. It was the World it can it was the candidates tournament. Oh, it was the candidates. It wasn't the World Championship, but it oh, was it, the candidates. It was the candidates who were having. Matches. Oh, okay. And it was at okay, so it was at Trump Tower. Trump Tower. Yeah. And. Uh, Trump asked Benko a question. What was the question that Trump asked so Benko? Trump asked Benko, don't you think I could also be a grandmaster if I put in one or two years of chess? And what did Benko, Benko what was Benko's reply Benko to that rep question? His reply was, you need to be born again. I have never known anyone who started with chess after the age of 20 and became a grandmaster. Right. Okay. So. That's a classic quote from Pal Benko to Donald so Trump. So the answer was no. No. <laughs> right. You, 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 you have to be born again, yeah. Donald. Okay. All right. Let's present the game to our viewers that uh, Pal Benko played in 1951 when he was in Hung still in Hungary. It was a club match. Yep. Uh, and it was played against a, a Hungarian master by the name of Korodi. And a grand, uh, it wasn't a, he wasn't a grandmaster. He was a master. And he op he had white. And yeah. what did Master Hungarian Master Karodi play against Palpenko when Palpenko was like 22 or 23 years old? D4. He played D4, to which Palpenko Benko plays D5. Yeah. Okay, white's next move. What was it? White plays C4. What is this? Which what what is the Queen's what, Gambit? Queen's Gambit. Yeah, white is offering a popular. A pawn. This is a popular opening. Extremely popular. Now yeah. you can accept the pawn. Black yep. could, could accept the pawn, but Benko decided to decline it by playing the pawn to c6. Right. Does this have a name? Does this actually def a, a, a variation of defense have a name? This makes us a Slav. Slav defense. Yeah. This is a Slav defense to the Queen's Gambit. Okay, how did Karodi uh, play his next move? Well, he develops his knight to f3. Knight f3. Okay. We'll see it. We'll see it now be, being shown on our our graphic yeah. here, yeah. and to which uh, Benko replied with knight f6. He develops his knight 
on G8 to F6, okay? Okay, fourth move coming up. What does uh, Karodi do? He plays knight to C3, developing his other knight. Okay, we see another knight coming out on C3. And now is where Benko, or Benke in Hungarian, <laughs> play E6. He plays the pawn up here, now which shuts in this light-squared bishop. Yeah. Now we have what we call the semi-Slav defense. We have transposed from a Slav defense to what they call a semi-Slav defense. Right. What did White do now on his fifth move? It's move number five, right. and Karodi so, played. So White also, right, plays, plays E3. Which yeah. shuts in, which shuts actually in shuts his, in his, his dark squared bishop. His own bishop, yeah. Okay, and now to which uh, Benke, Benko plays knight on b8 to d7. Knight bd7 is his move. Okay, what does white now do on his sixth move? He plays bishop to d3. It's a good square for the bishop. Okay, we see another bishop coming aiming, from f1 to d3. Aiming at the king's side. Okay, so he's got three pieces developed already, to which Benko now takes the pawn right. on c4 with the d-pawn. D takes c4 is his, his move. Is right. I move this knight, <laughs> right? Okay, so what does uh, White do now? Doesn't White have to take that so pawn? I think part of the reason he waited, yes. he, he waited until he had moved his bishop. And yes. Now he's forcing him to move to it a again. second time. Right, so yeah. he, he, did, he delayed capturing on c4 to force White to, 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 move to his, lose a, well, actually lose a tempo because right. now what Benko played now was b5, the pawn on b7 to b5 attacks the bishop. Yeah. We'll see that right now. Okay, now the bishop is under attack, has to move to save itself. Has to move, so he just retreats it to where it was, bishop to d3. Okay. Still aiming at the black king side. Okay. Benko's next move uh, is now bishop b7. He only had uh, only one other square he could go to, which is bishop right. a7, but bishop b7 is, is, is the much better square to be on. Right. Bishop b7, okay. It is now White's ninth move. What does he do? He castles. Okay, castling is good. Always a good idea. Right. Now, Benko, in response to White's castling, advances his pawn to b4, which attacks the knight on c3. We'll yep. see that right now. b4 attacks yep. the knight. All right, that knight has to move to save itself. Yep. Where is it going? So rather than you know put it off on the edge of the board, he Which, yep. puts it in the center of the board on e4. And it's not advisable to really to move knights to the side of the board. Right. Isn't there an old, what's that old saying in chess? Knight, a knight on the rim is dim or yeah. is grim. Grim, right. Yeah. That's a, is that whole true? Uh, usually, usually, yeah. usually a knight, you don't want to develop knights to the side of the board. They should be more centered. Right, in the middle, it, 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 it um, Attacks eight squares. If it's right. on the edge, it only attacks four. Right, exactly. So. All right, so after knight e4, now here is what, instead of, now black could have taken the knight on e4 with the knight on f6, yeah. but Benko plays the pawn from c6 to c5. What, does, what is his threat now? By advancing the pawn to c5, what right. do we have here? All right, so a double attack on this knight right. from that bishop and that knight. Okay, so. Uh, White has to make a decision. Do we defend that again, like the, with Queen C2 would do that? Right, or he, or he could have or, or it just back. Or, or retreat, yes. But he takes. He takes. With check. Okay, knight takes F6, check. Yeah. Now, I see three ways to take back that knight. Yeah. Okay. Shall we show our viewers, before we show what Benko mm, played, right, right. can we show actually yeah. the, the choices? He did not, Benko did not play Knight takes f6, why not? Why can't he play just the knight up here? What's wrong with that? Well, he could actually... I think, yeah, the problem would be... Yes. I think bishop bishop comes here, check. Check, and then he has to block that check. Right. And the only blocker he can do without losing a piece is knight d7 back here. Right. And now we can put more pressure on this knight by playing oh, this... Playing, yeah, this, right. this knight here, right. Play this knight here, now we have a double attack. And the knight can't move. And the only way to defend it again is put the bishop back on c8. Yeah. Okay, and, and now what's gonna happen? What we're gonna happen is we're gonna take, are we, not, are, are we gonna take, no, no, actually stronger. Right. Queen f3, look what we got here. Queen f3 threatens mate on f7, right. but also yes. threatens to win the, the rook. rook on, yeah, so, yeah, this is so, not good for, so this is not good for white, right, so uh, or for black, I should say. Right, so that, yeah. that wouldn't work. Right, exactly. So the knight, there's a knight here. Yes, there's a black, is there? White knight here. White knight, check, 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 okay. Yep. All right. 
Hey, where was this here? I got, I got this all wrong here. Hold it. Where was this? Oh, is this still here? No. no. Oh, this is here. This is still here. This is yeah. here. Okay. And where is this knight? Okay. And this. Oh, it's knight that just came up. We had just came up. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, what he did so actually, and he doesn't take with the queen. Instead, Benko takes with the pawn. Yeah. Let's play. We're going to show this. The G pawn takes the knight on f6. So he's now. And, and usually, the, usually yeah. doubled pawns are bad, but yeah. in this case, it's. it's yeah, we see it now. We see double right. pawns on the f file. It's not so bad. No, it's not. It, it helps attack the center, and it also opens this file. Yes. Opens up the G file. Which, yeah, yes. turns okay. out to be critical. So what did White do now after Benko took on f6? So now he develops his queen. Queen to e2. E2 yeah. It looks like it vacates that square for the rook maybe to come over right. d1. That right. looks like a yeah. good square for the rook to be on. Here is what Benko played. Queen b6. Plays it, puts more pressure on the pawn on d4. Yeah. Queen b6, we see it being played now graphically. Uh, okay, so white's move, what does he do? I guess white does, is annoyed with these pawns here yeah. on, on the queen side here. So what did Korodi do now on his uh, 13th move? Oh, he attacks the pawn yeah. on b4. All right, what is Benko gonna do? Well, Benko doesn't want to take that pawn on a3, one thing, or take the pawn on d4. He wants to continue development mm -hmm. and put pieces on ideal squares. Bishop d6 is where he brings the bishop, aiming at that king side. Right. He is looking at a king side attack. Yeah. All right, so the bishop's on d6. What does Karodi do now on his 14th move? So now he takes the pawn on b4. Okay, he takes it on b4. Okay, now, black has to take, take back, otherwise he will have, because white is threatening now to take on c, uh, c5 here. Right. The question is, does black take this pawn on b4 with the pawn or the queen? Or does he actually take this pawn on c5 and take the pawn on d4? He has choices. He makes the right decision right. by capturing the pawn on d4. C takes d4 is what Benko played. Okay. So he's taken a central pawn, and, and now he's left white with these double pawns? doubled, isolated pawns double, yes, on, right. on the open file. These, these are terrible. Yes. These are terrible. The worst type of pawns to have are double, uh, double isolated pawns. Right. Uh, double pawns are bad enough. But doubled and isolated, isolated on an open file that where it can be attacked is, is the worst. Chess players should try to avoid right. ever getting double pawns, and, right. and especially having double isolated pawns. Yeah. Okay. So what did Karodi do now? He uh, takes back. He takes d4. Okay. So he takes back. All right. So what are we doing now? It's, uh, oh, well, it's actually must be time for, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I, no, no, whose move is this? White's move? So, so we just played, uh, he takes d4, so oh, now it's well, now it's 15, time. Right. Now it's the time that this rook on, this rook on h8 has no business here. Right. It, it belongs on g8. That's where he played the rook. rook yeah. Benko played rook g8. Aiming right at the king. Right at the king, okay. It's only protected, that pawn on g2 is only protected by the king. Yeah. Okay, so what does uh, Karodi do now? He if, makes a mistake here. Because you know, what was the mistake he made? He makes a mistake here? Yeah. Okay. So we what should he have okay we were thinking he probably with the attack coming yes he probably needed to make space room for his king to get off of this yes. he this should file. have brought the rook over to d1 which he could, which he could have, which uh, which allowed, which the queen going to e2 allowed, right. but he chose not to do that. Yeah, he, he should have allowed his king some escape, yep. some, or as the Germans call it, uh, luft, luft, air, right. uh, space to, get, to yep. escape. But he didn't do that. Instead, we, what the, he made the mistake of advancing yeah, the pawn. Yeah. I don't know what he was thinking. I think, well, he, what, what do you think? Benko wanted to win this pawn on b4, which was un, Benko was not concerned about this pawn on b4, yeah. which he could have won. He's more concerned about the attack on the king's side. All, All right. right, so this mistake is now followed by this following move. Benko now played, queen takes the pawn on d4. Look at this move, wait, 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 wait. Hold it, hold it. What is this all about? Queen takes the, the pawn on d4. We see it now uh, shown there. Now, white now realizes he cannot take that queen on d4. Before we play white's actual next move, let's show why white cannot take that queen on d4. Okay. So if we were to take it. If you were to take that, Benko would have continued with rook takes the pawn, rook takes g2 check. Yeah. The king only has one square. Right. King h1, and then 
with rook takes the pawn on h2, isn't that neat? You know what? We we missed uh, we or, missed a move or, earlier. Oh, you know we missed a move. Or, or, or we yes. put something back on the wrong square. Yes, yeah. we did. We did. <laughs> That's right. We did. We did. We bishop. put we put we put, we had the bishop here on b7, b7 but we forgot yes. to put it back. Yep. This bishop was always here on b7. Yep. Yep. That was actually on the on the eighth move we had put that. Right, which is then critical. Then when we when we set up the pieces again, yeah. we didn't put it backward. <laughs> but this would have been this would be mate yeah. after this here and the rook down h1 mate. Right. Yeah. Okay. But that didn't happen. Right. This did not happen because we're gonna go back to the actual position. Yeah. All right, so White realized he could not take the queen, so he realized I don't know. He's in trouble. He's, he realized he's in trouble. So I don't know what he thinks. Yeah. Well, well, one thing he's probably because worried about, he was probably thought Benko was gonna to threaten to come over the queen here. Sure, yeah. And that's that's why he probably played this right. move. Right, yeah, that's, H3. you're probably right, yeah. He played H3, stopping the queen to go to G4, and now here is where, uh, okay, after H3, well, now Benko comes with knight e5. Yeah. Puts more pressure on more the knight on, 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 on f3. Yeah, this is horrible. Yeah, because yeah. if he takes, yeah. he can't, that pawn is pinned by the rook, so right. he can't take yeah. back. Yeah, so what he did, here is where White now took the queen. Didn't he take yeah, that? I think, yeah. yeah, I think it's just desperation, right? Desperation, right. right. There's, there's nothing else right, so to do here. so let's play. The knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. Okay, yeah. we see knight, okay, we, see, we see it now, to which, Benko plays rook takes g2 check. Okay, we see yep. that. Okay, and the king only has one move. Protected by the bishop, so right. he has to go here. Okay, and now and we one. have Benko's next great move, yep. rook h2 check. Yep. He can't go back to g1 with the king because rook h1 would be mate. Mate, right. So he, he, he's got... So this, well, he, he, he resigned he at resigned this point, here. but Why we, we can show, right? Yeah, we well, can let's show. show. Let's show our viewers. If he had played, king takes the rook. Okay, now Benko would have played Knight g4 double check. Right, check the with the bishop knight. And the bishop and the knight and the bishop, and the only move he had, well, he has two moves, uh, but he, uh, but if he goes, well, actually, he has one, actually, one move. Right. He only has this move, that, oh, his only move was king g1. Right. To which. And we can point out that it, in the case of a double check, yeah. the only response is you have to move, right? Because yes. you can't capture because right. this one's Double also check checking. forces the king to move. Forces the king to move, so he, which he does, and the, would and, have to. And then he would have ended the game with mate with nice, bishop nice h2. Check mate, yeah. Now this is a brilliant game. This yeah. is actually when Benko was young. He was in his 20s, 22, 23, and uh, it showed that he had talent oh, even yeah. there at that age. Yep. Okay, so again, we, we Benko, he died, as, as I say, was six weeks ago, August 26th in mm -hmm. Budapest, Hungary. He was 91 years old and one of the top players in this country, certainly during the 1960s yep. and 70s, uh, and dominated U.S. Opens. And, uh, made, and made Fisher's championship Fisher, possible. Fisher by... probably would never, maybe have never become world champion yeah, ever. no way to know. If it were not for Benko giving up his seat as he did yep. uh, in, in that 1970 interzonal. Yep. A very important, that was a turning point in chess history in yep, this country. Absolutely, yeah. Now, before we end this program, uh, I want to bring out uh, to our viewers the fact that the Fishburg Public yes. Library this Saturday, October 12th, yep. 2019, yep. happens to be National Chess Day. And for the second year in a row, maybe actually third, the third, third year, year, third year in a row, year in a row think, yeah. the third year in a row, the Fitchburg Public Library is hosting a, ca a, a fun chess tournament yep. celebrating National Chess Day. If you were to go to wachusachess.org or to the Fitchburg Public Library website, you get all the details of it. Mm -hmm. It's a free event, no entry fee. I, I hope that the uh, yeah. people who view this who oh, see this before the National Chess Day, attend, attend the, and have fun. And free uh, prizes, right? Free pr prizes to everyone. Everyone gets a prize. Okay, well, we'll see you next time on Chess Chat. We hope you enjoyed the game Dave and I present to you on a tribute to Grandmaster Pal Benko. Quite a player, one of the, this country's top players. Mm -hmm.